speak to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this harvest, Thanksgiving, we're continuing our mini series in the amazing book of Philippians. Philippians is such an incredibly thankful and joyful uh, book. As you remember, uh, where was Paul? He was in prison, and yet he was overflowing with thankfulness. My thing is, thankfully, knowing Christ Jesus uh, was the focus of the Apostle Paul. Everything focused on G Jesus. In chapter 3, he said he could have focused elsewhere as, as a devoted Jewish person. He, he could have had confidence in the flesh in all his amazing accomplishments. Uh, he talks about his background, his circumcision, being a, a Pharisee, his zeal, his dedication, his persecuting the church. Uh, but he said, whatever things were gained, he considered them as loss for Christ. Everything that Paul did, he refocused on Jesus. If we're not focused on Jesus, we're off-centered, we're eccentric rather than Christocentric. Verse 8, and he goes on to say, I count, again he said, I count all things but loss. Are you willing to count everything in your life as lost for the sake of your passion, your focus on Jesus Christ? Is Jesus your focus? There's so many things to knock us off, focus to get our attention. I consider all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. My Lord is your knowledge of Christ, your intimate relationship with Christ, something that consumes you, that is your passion. Do you seek first his kingdom? He continued to say, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, he was speaking literally, of uh, Paul sacrificed everything to follow Christ. He put everything on the altar. And what did he count them? These amazing accomplishments. He counted them uh, by dung in the great it's scubula. He said, all of my accomplishments are worth nothing that I may win Christ. That's his passion. Is that your passion? Is your passion uh, Christ above everything else? Verse 9, and to be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. And, and Paul had been a circular Pharisee. He'd been absolutely into it, dedicated, focused, uh, committed. And so if anybody could trust in his, in the flesh, in the accomplishments, it would be Paul. And, and so he's saying, I don't trust in any of that. Uh, but what I trust in is the faith of Christ the righteousness that is of God by faith, it's justification uh, by faith. Paul had this revelation that none of his accomplishments, his successes, they, they ultimately didn't win. They didn't bring heaven for him. And then in verse 10, this is uh, worth uh, memorizing. When we say this together, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death. What was Paul's absolute passion? Yeah, Jesus to know Christ and not just academically, but intimately to know Christ. That's that's what gave him thanksgiving and joy. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, it's harvest Thanksgiving Sunday. I guess I'll have to be thankful. I'm okay, I'll be thankful. I have to be thankful. I'm glad that's over. 
No, it, it flowed over because of his passion for our Jesus Christ. Notice what he focused on. Uh, Jesus, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. So both Good Friday and Easter Sunday, he was passionate. He was focused, and he embraced his suffering. And uh, in our culture, sometimes we want to skip the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable to his death. And he goes on in, in verse 12, and he's very humble, and he said, it's not like I've got this all figured out, I, that I've attained this, either it was already perfect. There's a humility to uh, Paul in this quest. He said, but I follow after. He's passionate. He's committed. Uh, even on a holiday weekend, he's seeking Christ first. Jesus came first uh, for Paul, that I may apprehend that, for also I was apprehended of Christ. <clears throat> and and look at that amazing. Uh, I want to apprehend Christ, but he's apprehended me. That's relationship. And in verse 13, he says again, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. There's a humility in his walk with Christ. I know I haven't, I'm not perfect in my Christian walk, but this one thing I do, this one thing, and when he says this one thing, it should get our attention. What's the one thing? And notice what he says, forgetting those things that are behind. <clears throat> forgetting what's behind it. If anybody could have looked back uh, and dusted himself off, it would have been Paul. But he said, I'm forgetting those things. I'm counting them uh, by loss. And, you know, it's so easy to be stuck in the things in the past, isn't it? Ah, uh, the good things, the, the good, the bad, the ugly. And you can be uh, stuck in nostalgia, you can be stuck in regret, you can be stuck in guilt or uh, shame or disappointment. Uh, you might have said, how many of you ever said uh, annual goals for yourself at New Year's? And New Year's resolution, how many of you have ever broken them? How long does it take? <clears throat> yeah, and sometimes people say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to improve my temper, and, and sometimes you blow it, and then you beat yourself up. I'm going to lose weight, and you blow that, or I'm going to exercise, or, or I'm going to be, you know, uh, better with a certain family member, and you make this resolution, and then when you fall on your face, it's easy to beat yourself up. Uh, but Paul here says, forgetting those things that are behind me, we're not stuck, we're not like Lot's wife who looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. She forgot those things so often. We live in regret, the if onlys and the what ifs. And, but he didn't just forget them, and he reaches forth. He's reaching for, and that has to be uh, the direction of our Christian walk. We're reaching forward to those things that are before. We're moving forward. We're seeking first his kingdom. And in verse 14, why don't we read that together? I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well worth Memorize it. That's our focus as Christians, as God's church. We are pressing, we're forgetting what's behind us. Any of our accomplishments, any of our setbacks, and we're pressing to the mark for the high, it's a high calling of God, but it's all rooted in Christ. Jesus, our passion, it's rooted in Christ. I remember uh, one person in St. Matthew's Sabbath, they, they've been in a previous church, they said, what was it like? And they said, it was wonderful, there was everything but Jesus. I thought, and what an interesting comment. Jesus was missing. And you know, 
the sad thing, we can get so caught up in church, we can miss Jesus. You wouldn't think that was possible? Oh, it is, definitely. But it is. We want to press towards the mark for the bride. It's a high calling of God, but it's all rooted in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Let's pray. And dear Father, on this harvest Thanksgiving, we are, we are grateful for the Apostle Paul, who didn't let anything hold him back, and he wasn't stuck in the past. He was focused on you, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, may that be true for us. In Jesus' name, amen.